Hi students, so let us continue with the solutions of JE transient material. Question number 10. Two point masses small m are held in place a distance d apart. So two point masses are held at distance d apart. So this is d. Okay. Another point mass capital M is midway between them. So on the mass, this is also point mass, is midway, so in the center of this length. If M is slightly displaced perpendicular to this line connecting the two fixed masses, so these two are fixed, and then released, what will be the angular frequency of simple harmonic oscillation of capital M? So if it is displaced slightly and then released, according to the equation, it will oscillate. So again the same thing, here it is an equilibrium, right, because this mass will attract this with a gravitation force G and N by this R square and this mass will also attract this this way. So the net force on this will be zero because the force on this by this and the force on this by this are equal and opposite. The question is if you displace this mass slightly up, so plus right now show the displacement as x or you can write y, okay. So now your mass is no longer here, it is here. Capital M is here now. So the force will be along the line joining the particles, right? These two are fixed, okay? Do not worry. So here there will be a force F and that F will be what? G N M by this distance square. What will be this distance? This is hypotenuse, this is D by 2. This is D by 2 okay? root over d by 2 square, so d square by 4 plus x square and root this root whole square. So no, no point writing root whole square, right? So this is the square of this hypotenuse. So this is the force. Okay, now there is one more force here. Now we are interested in, if displacement is here, we are interested in restoring force in this direction, right? So if you resolve this into two components, so let us say this angle is theta, then this force which is like this, you will also have two components, one will like this and this will have two components like this, right? So if this is theta, this angle will be theta, right? This angle, so this will be theta. So this is f, this will be f cos theta, and this will be f sin theta. Similarly for this force, this will be f cos theta and this will be f sin theta. So you can see these two will cancel out, these two will add. So the net force which is responsible for bringing the body down, which is your restoring force, that will be equal to 2f sin theta. Right, 2f sin theta. Now what is f? g n i by d square by 4 plus x square. Right. And sin theta, how to write? Sin theta, I can write it as opposite, which is x divided by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is root over d square by 4 plus x square. Whenever you see this kind of quantities, right? a root a, that is always equal to a power 3 by 2. Because root a means a power half. Half plus 1 is 3 by 2. So this quantity I can now write as, replace this by 3 by 2. So this is the restoring force. Now if you look at this formula, of course the direction of the restoring force is opposite to displacement. So you can put a minus sign. Okay. Now right now if you look at this formula, this does not show that the motion is going to be SHL. Okay, because I cannot say whatever is here is constant. There is x sitting here. Yes or no? Whereas for simple harmonic motion, the force should be proportional to minus of displacement. So this guy should be constant, but this guy is not constant, there is x sitting. So right now it is not SHM. But for small displacements, okay, so for small displacements, so if x is small, now when you say small, you must mention small with respect to whom, right? So if x is small compared to d, then your x square will be even more smaller. So this x square guy can be removed. So when you add, you can remove, okay, not when you multiply. So this guy will go out. It should be d square power by 4 power 3 by 2. 
now if you see this con this guy here is constant right so now you can see that the motion is going to be resetting let us simplify this so this will be minus 2 g n m pi d square power 3 by 2 will be d q 1 by 4 power 3 by 2 1 by 4 power half first you take that will give you 2 2 power 3 will give you 8 then 8 will go up so this will become 16 okay so please do the arithmetic yourself so this is the restoring force or the net force which acts on this mass once you displace it from its equilibrium position so once we have found the net force next thing is to write the acceleration so acceleration will be minus 16 g m m x by d q this is the force divided by the mass which is accelerating here which mass is accelerating capital m right so capital m is up put here so this capital m will cancel so this will be your omega square right so let us see which option adjust with this so they want you to find angular frequency so omega will be root of 16 g m by d q root 16 will be 4 and this d root d q i can also write 4 d squared into d square root of d squared will be d so root over g m by d this option a okay let's see the next question now the ends of a rod of length capital l and mass small m are attached to two identical springs as shown. The rod is free to rotate about its center. So now it will be angular SHM. So we should think in terms of not the net force is being seen by to the net torque. Okay. The rod is depressed slightly at end A and released. The time period of the resulting oscillation. Okay. So here there is a rod, right now it is an equilibrium and there is a spring connected here and this spring connected here. Okay, it can rotate about the fixed point 4. This whole length is L. So this is L by 2, this is L by 2. Spring constant is Q. So we have to find the, the mass of the rod is given to be in M. Okay, so let us see how to solve this. So right now it is an equilibrium. So uh, you can imagine this to be horizontal, otherwise mg will act right. So this whole road right now cannot be in equilibrium. So imagine this is on a, on a horizontal platform, smooth platform, so the friction can be neglected, or you assume it is in gravity free space. Okay. So right now, this whole rod is in equilibrium, this spring is neither stretched or compressed, neither this one, so there are no spring forces. So now, once you displace this rod, depress this end, this is A, this is B, so one end is slightly depressed down, so this will go up, right? So let us say, this is the displacement, so this will be the new rod, okay, position with the new rod, so very small displacement, okay? So this theta. So this will be how much? Since the displacement is small, in SHM displacement has to be small only, right? So this will, this is L by two. This is small displacement, so you can consider this as arc. So this displacement will be L by two theta. Once you do that, this spring has been stretched, so there will be a spring force K into X. This spring has also been stretched upwards, so spring force will be like downwards, right? K into x. So the torque about this point will be kx into r perpendicular, right? So kx into l by 2. And what is your x? l by 2 theta l by 2. And this is the torque due to this. Same torque will be due to this also. And the direction of both the torques will be in the same direction. See, forces may be opposite, but torque are in the same direction, right? This is R, this is F, right? so R cross F, torque is out of the board. Similarly, this is R, this is F, so R cross F, out of the board. So both the torques are in same direction, so you can simply add. So this will give you real one, two, right? 
so that will be the network so one two can be cancelled so this will be k x squared by 2 theta so once you get the torque now find the angular acceleration torque by moment of inertia torque is k x squared by 2 since this is a thin rod which is uh, rotating around its center perpendicular to the length of the rod the axis is perpendicular to the length passing through its center so moment of inertia will be what ml squared by 12 so that is your moment of inertia theta is missing right and again if the angular displacement is clockwise the torque is anti clockwise so you can always put a minus sign fine so once you have done that ml square gets cancelled this will become 6 right 2 6 at 12 so 6 will go up so 6 k by m theta so this guy is your angular frequency square so time period is 2 pi divided by omega so the rule paper reciprocal of this will be m by 6 k so which option it is two by m by six k option c let's see next question that is also based on mm, spring let me quickly wrap the board first so everywhere no, the condition is still the same find the equilibrium position displace it from equilibrium position find the net force or in case of angular SHL when you know the angle is you know, oscillating not the linear displacement then you go for torque so question number 12 it says a particle of mass m is attached to three identical springs a b and c each of force constant k is shown in the figure. If the particle of mass m is pushed gently, sorry, slightly against the spring A and released, what would be the spring force? So, and I'm going to find the spring. So here is the spring. Okay. So here is a body, and three springs are connected like this. Okay. This problem, if you remember, we have done in the class. What is the revision? You can see for J V students we have done. So this is ninety degree. Okay, this is ninety degree. This is one thirty five, one thirty five. Okay, change, and this is. 45, 45 plus 90 is 135. Okay, each one of them has same spring constant. K, K, K. The one that we did in the class has uh, is case where the spring constant of these two were different from this. Okay. So again, again, imagine it's a gravity-free space that should be mentioned in the question actually. So now the system is in equilibrium, okay. all the springs are in this relaxed length, nothing is happening as such. So the moment you depress this by a certain distance x, this will compress by x, so it will spring force upward k into x. Now the issue comes with this spring. If the body comes down, then this spring will compress by x, same amount as the body. But this will not stretch by x right because we are not moving the body parallel to its length so to find the increase in length of this spring imagine this so imagine this spring i will just show you by this line and you are creating here a very small displacement for clarity i am showing it big but in theory when you or do simple harmonic motion problems the displacement from mean position is always considered to be very small so this length of the spring will become this isn't it because now this block will be or this body will be here so to find the extension of this spring why we are looking for extension all right once you know the extension then only you will know the spring force right Spring force is what? K times whatever is the extension or the compression. So here it is extension. So to find the extension, what you do? You drop a perpendicular. 
Now, this length is much longer than this displacement. Therefore, these two you can imagine to be parallel or almost parallel. In that case, these two, this part and this part as same length. Meaning, this is the increase in the length of the spring. Okay. Honestly speaking, that is only true if these two lines are parallel, it is exactly parallel. Like this. Then to know what is the you know, length difference between these two lines, you just drop a perpendicular. So this would be the difference in the length of these two lines, isn't it? But here I can see as I have been told, telling you, this x is infinitely small. So this angle is going to be very, very small, this angle. So you can consider this to be almost parallel. So now this angle is let's say theta, which is 45. So if that is 45, then if this is 45, then this also can be taken as 45, which I learned is theta. So this increase in the length will be x cos theta, right? Very good. Same thing will be happen, will happen here, right? So extension of this spring is x cos theta. So there will be spring force on this, this side, right? Parallel to the spring, opposite to its extension. So let me now show you the force type. So when this was compressed by x, due to this spring, this body will feel a spring force here. That is your Qx. Because this spring has been stretched this way, okay, this way, spring force will be this way. So that will be your k into x. But what is the extension? Not x, x cos theta. Same story will be here also, right? k in x cos theta. Now that itself is theta. Now, we are looking for the restoring force. Restoring force should act opposite to the displacement caused in the body. The displacement was x this way. So I want force this way. So this force is already there. These two are not there. So let us take their components. So this is theta. So be this force, if this is f, what is the component of this f in this direction? f cos theta. So this cos theta will become cos square. So the net force will be this kx, which acts in a direction opposite to displacement will be kx plus kx cos theta times cos theta, which will give you cos square theta. And from here, one more component will come, so it will be twice. Now, theta was given 45 degree. So, if theta is given 45 degree, cos 45 is how much? 1 by root 2. So, cos square will be 1 by 2. So, the force, net force, which brings it back is kx plus 2kx cos square 45 is 1 by 2. So, 2 gets cancelled. So, it is 2k x. So once you know the force, acceleration will be force divided by mass. Again, minus sign you can put to show the force is opposite to displacement. And this must be your angular frequency square. So time period will be 2 pi divided by omega so it will be m by 2 k. Okay. So which option it is? 2 pi divided by m by 2 k option C. Okay.